So I was recently asked to film a video on how I take a log and turn it into a spoon billet. This is a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy concept. Um, it requires a couple tools. Some of the tools you might use could be a little bit different than the ones that I use. I apologize for the, the noise in the background, so I'll get a leaf blower going. But what I use is I start with a chainsaw for um, if I got a couple logs to do and I don't feel like fatiguing myself because it is quite a lot of work physically. Um, but I start with my chainsaw, get it down to basically the length of billet that I want, which is slightly oversized from uh, the length of the spoon that I'm going to carve. Um, and I like to inspect the end grain to see if there's any checking or anything, which is just cracks from drying. And this end did have a slight crack, and so that's where I'm going to start my initial split. Um, but anyways, you need a chainsaw or a bow saw or some kind of saw. Um, tape measure just to figure out, you know, what length your, your billet needs to be. Some gloves if you choose. I opt not to just because I feel like I have better control without them. A mallet, which we'll be using. A fro for splitting, or you can just use your axe if, if you choose to do that. An axe. This one is the Granfers Brook large carving axe. And that's about it. So we'll get right into it. I basically like to, if, like I said, if there's any kind of checking in the end, um, I cut out most of it with the chainsaw. I might have to take an inch or two off the end. Um, and there might still, by, by the pith here, which is the very center of the wood, which is unusable, um, there might be a little crack starting there, and there is here. So I'll line it up with that. Give it a couple hefty whacks. And as you can see, the split, nice and straight for me. This is really, really nice straight walnut that I got from my buddy Sonny. Some nice colors in it too, some purples and yellows. And if your log is big enough, um, you can continue processing that down into smaller bits. Pretty stuff. I'm going to take the other half and do the same thing. And I notice here there is a little bit of a branch coming out of the bark here, so there probably is a gnarly little knot in there somewhere which might affect how it splits, but being as it's pretty small, I don't expect a lot of problems from it. When you're doing this, you always want to keep out of the way of travel of this so that if this club sends my fro through the wood um, more aggressively than I expect, I don't want it going this way to where it's going to go into my leg um, or hurt anybody around me or anything like that. So just be mindful of the direction that you're using it. Keep a good handle on your, on your tools. pretty decent. So looking at the thickness of this, I'm trying to decide if I can get, um, split this again and get more spoons out of it. Chances are I probably can, so I'm going to give that a go. Sometimes you end up thinking, well, I can get two spoons out of this. I know I can get one, but I'll try to get two. And then you split it and it doesn't split the way that you want it to and then you end up with no spoons out of it, but that's just kind of, that's how it goes sometimes, just the way the cookie crumbles. Just try to split it as straight as you can and hope for the best. And that split pretty darn good, actually. So now that I have this into um, manageable size, I want to remove the pith which again is the very center of the wood is totally useless. It shrinks at a faster rate than the rest of the wood. So that's generally where your cracking will start if it does. And keep in mind how wide the bowl of your spoon is. So that's the widest point in, in any of your spoons. Um, I'm going for, let's measure this real quick. Keep in mind too that the bark's gonna come off so you'll end up with a little bit less material. So I'm gonna keep probably about two inches or so of material. Give this on so I can see a little better. And I'll just drop cut that off. You can see it starting to split here. Again, being mindful of where the axe is gonna end up. There's that gnarly knot I was talking about. And then you wanna remove all the bark. And you can do this. Um, with either 
the carving axe as I'm doing here for just a regular general purpose axe if that's what you want. I'll also take off the corners here because these are totally useless to me. I normally wouldn't be doing this in a hunch position, but for the sake of film, filming a video, I didn't want to crowd up my shed with uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, so if you're going to be putting these in tubs of water, as I do to store them, you want to make sure that all of the bark is, is gone. Not just the outer stuff, not just this, but the stuff on the inside too. That's all got to go. Because that's where all the bacteria, or most of the bacteria and wood lives. And you don't want that getting into your water because it'll turn cloudy and, and gross pretty quick. So just using planing cuts will take off a lot of it. Hopefully you guys can see it. Usually it's pretty obvious the inner bark here um, normally has a slightly different color than the wood itself. So it's pretty apparent what needs to go. But you want to remove all that and then you basically have your billet. Um, you can actually process it down further from here. Like I know that I won't be using this little chunk right here. I'm going to basically turn this into a rectangle like that. So all this top portion here is not necessary. So I could just lop that right off right now if I wanted to. And then that piece is done. And it goes into a bin. I throw the lid on for now. Once the bin gets full, I will fill it up with water and that'll stop all that from cracking on me. Um, but I'll process a couple more pieces so you guys can get a kind of a repetitive idea of the process itself and it's not it's not set in stone that you have to do it in, in the order that I'm doing it like for example I'm doing the bark first before the pith right now not a big deal it's uh, as long as they both get taken care of it doesn't matter what order you go in videos like this um, more for begin beginners I think some people don't know what I would call basic things these are these are basic to me but they weren't always and sometimes I forget that um, it's important to me to be able to teach people not just advanced steps in carving but basic ones as well so I'll square up this side I don't want to put, I don't want to leave too much material on it that I'm not going to use because that's just going to take up room in my bins, which means that I have to use more bins. And I store these in my house, so I don't want, you know, 15 bins full of um, subpar wood taking up my whole house. And there's another billet there. One of the beauties, too, is that you can orientate you can pre-plan how your spoon's going to go um, in the billet itself. So if I wanted to take this and make it just uh, turn it into one spoon blank, there's a lot of material there so I can put a lot of crank in that spoon if I really wanted to. Realistically, this corner's going to go, this corner's going to go, and the pit's going to go, which is going to leave me with probably an inch and a half or so uh, block of wood, which you can get pretty good crank out of. Or I can split it in half, as I did with that piece, and get two spoons with a little bit less crank. So I will show you uh, the method for getting a thicker billet. So basically, what I would do first is chop out the pith. You don't need it. This fro handle really needs to be replaced. And you can see a nasty knot there. Most people would let that stop them. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is using this portion and making a pocket spoon or something like that. A, a nice short stubby spoon so I'm not wasting this gorgeous wood because this stuff is really, really pretty. Hopefully you can see it. So I will knock off both of these corners here and hope that they split well. Just 
and I do with a little bit of cleanup with the axe as well as removal of the bark and I'll have a nice thick billet from this too so the beauty is that if I really wanted to I can orientate my spoon to be on the face of this I can orientate it to be on this face or if I really wanted to which I don't recommend um, I can orientate it on this face so having the bark up if you're looking into the bowl of the spoon um, if I carve it this manner I'll have concentric circles in, in the bowl of the spoon. If I were to carve it from this angle, obviously I'll have lines all down my spoon and I'll get that nice two-tone look. And sometimes I like to pre-set up, you know, pre-plan how that's going to go. Most of the time, probably, I would say. Um, but sometimes it's nice to just toss things up. Sometimes I'll pull out a billet out of the um, bin of water there. It's a little thick. And what I had planned originally will end up changing for me and I'll end up orientating the spoon completely different. Sometimes it's a mood thing. Sometimes I'll get, you know, a little stroke of genius that, oh, here's a little cool little inclusion that I'd like to uh, leave in this one, leave it intact. And the only way to do that is to orientate it a given way. Again, just removing the inner bark here and kind of flattening things out. Nice thing about this black walnut is it's really, really obvious where the wood starts and the, the bark stops. Any of this yellow stuff, that's inner bark. Not all woods are like this, but for the sake of the video, I figured this would be a good one to try. So I end up with a billet that is an inch and five eighths thick, inch and three quarters thick on this end, so I could square it up a little bit, by eight and three quarters inches long, by three and an eighth wide, which if you use the metric system, you'll have to do the conversions on that. Sorry about that. Um, so you can square it up from here even things up so that when you go to apply a template, if that's the way that you carve as I do, um, then it's quicker, easier for you. If you're processing a whole bunch of wood, as I will be today, um, I would probably recommend um, not fatiguing yourself on unnecessary details because it does take a lot out of you. Uh, it's, doing a lot of ax work is, uh, it's, it's not fun for your shoulder sometimes or your elbow. Uh, you can get tendonitis from it, as I have in the past. Um, but if you if you take care of your body, know when to stop or take breaks, know when to adjust things, then you'll be just fine. So that's three billets. Maybe we'll split this one up and uh, just process this one quickly. chopping block I normally use. It's just two logs stacked on top of each other. So it moves around on me a lot and it's not, uh, not the way I would recommend it to be honest. But I just want to throw together a quick video. Help out some people hopefully. Another way to remove the bark that I actually I kind of prefer because it's not it's not as hard on your body as uh, using the axe which gets strenuous after a while um, you can actually put it put your piece of wood in a front vise here and use a draw knife to, to take all the bark off I actually prefer that method and once this video is done and I go to process the rest of my wood that's probably the way I'll be doing it just for the sake of uh, the viewer right now, it's difficult to get multiple angles in one shot. But that is about it. You need a mallet, an axe, a piece of wood, a saw, um, possibly some safety equipment, possibly a tape measure, 
um, a way to split your, your log. And that's pretty much it. You take it from a log, half it, quarter it, and then keep taking it down to uh, smaller billets until you get the desired size. Remove the pith, remove the bark, remove any sharp corners that are not necessary to the spoon carving process. And uh, then make sure you preserve it. Maybe uh, put your billets in the freezer in a bag or in the fridge in a bag if it's only a couple or the way that I use, I use lots of uh, lots of bins and I fill them with water making sure that the wood is all the way below the water at all times and uh, changing that water out at least once a week. I have a video actually um, strictly about how to keep green wood green so check that out if you don't already know how and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and, and learned something from it and I'm going to get to it. I got a bunch more logs to do thanks to my buddy and I'll see you in the next one.